Excellent. <clears throat> Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Excellent. Well, again, thank you for having us. I thought I would take a little bit of time just to refresh everyone's uh, understanding of the close process. And then um, from there, we can walk through the, uh, the education fund reversions. And uh, we're pleased to have uh, Brad James here as well. So if there are specific questions uh, related to any of the uh, reversions as it relates to the Ed Fund, we can uh, ping Brad and, uh, and get some deeper insight into those. But <clears throat> as far as the, uh, the close is concerned, we, uh, we start closing the books about a month before June 30, and uh, it would have been Kathy's uh, last close with the accounting team. She takes and uh, closes the, uh, the books for all the appropriations, and uh, by way of doing that, she is uh, taking a look at uh, what the total appropriation was, how much had been spent. Uh, she takes a look to see she and the team would uh, take a look and see are there any outstanding purchase order obligations that need to be uh, accounted for are there any are there any carryovers and a carryover example could be that uh, we've got obligations in subgrant agreements or another uh, example of a carryover would be that uh, we want to hold some money to uh, make a final payment final june payment that would occur after uh, after june 30 and then the difference between what was appropriated, what has been spent to date, outstanding purchase orders and carryover is what uh, we come up with as our reversion. And so this is normally part of our budget presentation. It will be part of our uh, budget presentation that uh, we're looking forward to uh, having that conversation with you in the very near future. <clears throat> but. Uh, for purposes of today, because we wanted to talk uh, BAA and also uh, take a look at reversions, I, I wanted to uh, share that background as to how the close occurs and then take a look at uh, the reversions just for the Ed Fund. And you can see it's broken out by section. And the first one is the uh, education, finance, and admin appropriation. There were 500,000 in purchase orders that uh, had obligations. And then the balance is reverted, 950,000. The, uh, the next one going down the list would be special ed formula. Again, uh, Kathy would have taken a look with the accountants and seen what the original appropriation was, what had been spent, were there any uh, outstanding purchase order obligations, any carryover, and then the difference would be reverted back to the ed fund. And I won't review every single one of these today because of uh, the fact that we'll also come back in and uh, present our, our budget, which uh, this is a section of the budget book. But section uh, B503, education state placed. You can see there were no outstanding purchase orders carrying over 4.2 and we're reverting 880,000. This one caught my eye just as a, an auditor and accountant. Uh, reverting uh, 69 cents, but I uh, have to uh, give Kathy a call and uh, get an answer on that one. That was pretty close. Small school grants, same thing. And let me know if I'm going too fast. Essential early ed, you can see that uh, no outstanding purchase orders are carry forward and uh, the reversion is 41,000. Here's where I think we, uh, we want to focus our attention, tech ed. So back in uh, the July timeframe, because the, uh, the carryover memo that uh, Kathy prepares and submits to uh, finance and management goes out at the end of July, early August. And so at that time, we didn't have any outstanding uh, purchase order obligations. We had a uh, carryover of 300 and 23,000 for subgrant obligations, and then we reverted back 1.8 million of the uh, tech ed appropriation. And then flexible pathways, the 504.1, um, similar scenario. We had uh, no outstanding purchase orders. We had subgrant obligations of 1.1 million. 
and then we reverted the uh, the balance of 1.5 to the Ed Fund. <clears throat> so I will pause there and see if there are questions, and, uh, and also if Brad has uh, any additional insights he would like to share as it relates to the uh, the reversions. Morning, all Brad, all Brad, of education. Um, I don't have anything to add at the moment. Um, I will answer any questions people have, but I think part of, yeah, I, I'll, just, I'll just hold off and see if people have questions. Um, Representative Austin. Yep, just um, to make sure the vocabulary and definition is what I'm using, is that what you're using in terms of carry forward and reversion, can you just expand, just quickly, just explain what that is? I mean, I think I know what it, it is. I just want to make sure we're using the same terms. Sure. So uh, the, the carry forward would be the money that was uh, part of uh, the previous fiscal year appropriation that we are carrying to the next fiscal year. So in this particular example, flex, flexible pathways, $1.1 million is being carried forward to the new fiscal year. And then the 1.5 reversion is money that was part of the previous year's appropriation that we are reverting back to the end fund. And, and then what was the original appropriation? I mean, I, you don't need to, you don't need to answer that. I'm just, so just for context. It, it, sure, yeah. absolutely. Uh, for tech ed, the original appropriation was $15,514,000. And for context, uh, we're asking uh, in the new budget that we'll be submitting uh, to bump that up by uh, about $740,000. Thank you. Thank you. Which brings um, me to more complexity in terms of the way that we currently fund career and tech education, which comes through the districts, as I understand, to the tech centers. So um, I'm just a little bit confused about, is the 15 million reflect? Where did that money come from? Did that come from the districts? The, uh, the appropriation? Yeah. yeah. So that appropriation would be part of our ups and downs. And uh, we would uh, submit that as part of the, of, of the budget for review and approval. And we're asking for an additional 740,000 in increase. And then that is part of the overall Ed Fund bucket of dollars. Um, Brad, do you have additional insight into what makes that up? Well, I'm, I'm taking a, I'm taking a quick look. I mean, there's there's a part, part. I think I think part of the 15 million dollars that we're talking about here is for um, salary assistance and things like that. I was just trying to pull up a something so I could see that. Of course, I'm not prepared as usual. Um, so there's going going to your question, Chair Webb. There's um, let me come back so I can see you guys. There's um, the tech centers have a tuition that they that they bill per FTE, six semester average FTE, um, yep. to the school districts, and, and the school districts send that. That's part of their education spending for the yeah. school districts. So that, that's where the lion's share of the money comes from. There, there's more money than that comes in from supplemental assistance grants from the states. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's what this $15 million in, okay. in, in agri is where, what we're talking about. Okay. Um, and the, the reversion came because not everything, we overestimate on some things because we don't really have an idea on what their set, people's salaries are, how many people have, are hired that are applicable to transportation, et cetera, a wide variety of things. And so what we're doing when, when we're making these estimates for the initial appropriation is we're, we're we tend to overestimate a little bit. Um, and so this is money that we just overestimated. I think so this is a little more than usual. But. So it's un, unrelated to money that the districts actually already sent. This yes. is yeah. This yes. is coming basically as we would say off the top of the Ed Fund. Yeah. 
or as, as a grant or as a, <laughs> a line item. I, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a it's a line it's a line item which line you know, item. <laughs> kind exactly. of the same thing in some ways but but it's it's, it's specific to the to the tech centers themselves um so that that's what it's going towards and, and again that's where the money's coming back from i understand not, not, gonna, not the tuition rate and i understand we're going to have a broader conversation about ctes anyway but um representative conlon who is our our contact on uh, two appropriations on these issues are you recognizing me because I'm I hand am up? Okay, me, yeah. uh, thank you. Um, more of a, just a general question, uh, and uh, my memory isn't serving me well this morning. However, uh, it seems to me that when we have talked about BAA and BAA requests in previous years, it's generally around the general fund appropriation to the ed to the education agencies. This is, I think the first time I've seen BAA requests coming out of the Ed Fund. And correct me if I'm wrong on that. I, th I think I think you are. Um, I, I Because an annually, I, th I think, I, I'm pretty sure that we usually do have some type of BAAs for the Ed spending and small schools and all those pieces, um, because we're never exactly on, on target. So we're trying to get it you know, closer in with the BAA. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I, I do remember reversions. I don't remember financial requests coming out. Not, I don't have any opposition. I'm just curious as to what has been the traditional practice. Well, well the traditional practice, no. I mean, very, occasionally there have been times when we've underestimated small schools and maybe one or two other things where we have asked for more money in the ed, on the Ed Fund side. It, it doesn't happen too often. Again, as I said earlier, we tend to be a little bit over, yeah. you know, conserved, I guess is the term. Um, I'm not sure what specifically you're referring to right now in terms of tech centers, though. Are you talking about this, this new initiative that's coming up? Uh, yeah, I, th I mean, that seems to be the only request from the agency of education in the BAA for money. Okay, um, I, I just 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 very simplistically put, initial the the, the federal dollars that were coming out um, from from the relief funds, the three relief funds. Oh yeah, um, no, I'm sorry, Brad. I, I understand why oh, the request is here. Yeah, it was okay. just more about what has been traditionally done over oh. the years in terms of BAA and money coming out of the Ed Fund versus the general fund. But, and, you, and that's great. Thank you for answering the question. Representative James. Yeah, just, I think a, a very basic question. Um, and sorry, I was a few minutes late. The carry forward, are those funds that um, you anticipate then would just sort of roll forward into the new FY23 budget that we're building this legislative session and the reversion is available now? I guess I'm not, or... Is this all to do with the FY23 budget or is this all to do with the BAA? I, I'm trying to locate myself in time. Absolutely, thank you for the question. Um, <clears throat> this particular portion of the presentation is typically delivered when we come in and do the uh, agency budget. But uh, because of this uh, unique request of uh, a BAA coming off the Ed Fund of 1.5 million for TT CTE centers that uh, we'll have a conversation about at the top of the hour, uh, we thought it would be helpful if you saw the Ed Fund portion of the reversions so that you could see that uh, the way we close the books is that uh, any outstanding purchase orders, we keep those open and we request funds for those and then Carryover funds would be money that was appropriated in the last fiscal year that would carry over into this appropriation for, in this example, subgrant obligations of uh, 323,000. And then the reversion is uh, the remainder that is going to be returned to the uh, Ed Fund. <clears throat> so it's all at the, at the end of this fiscal year. Yes. Okay. It's all going back into the Ed Fund is basically yes. what it is. And, and you can be, that goes into this collection of 90 million, I think that we have on the bottom line. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. So it, it, it adds or is part of that, which yes. we will be discussing, I'm sure at length. <laughs> Chair Webb, can I go back and uh, reconnect with uh, Representative Conlon? Please do. So, you had asked the question about uh, <clears throat> BAAs, and uh, as you all know, I've only been here all of two years, but what I can do 
is I can go back and look in the books and uh, when we come back to deliver the uh, uh, the budget or even sooner than that, uh, provide a, some insight. The only BAA that I've uh, participated in to date was the Burlington uh, School District last year. Um, and then uh, here is it, here's the next one that uh, we have done. I remember having a conversation with Kathy Flanagan early on, and she had indicated that the agency, for whatever reason, typically did not participate in BAA, Budget Adjustment Act. But I'm happy to go back and uh, dig into that with, uh, with Christy and come back with an answer as to the frequency of using the BAA and uh, whether they were for uh, general fund purposes or ed fund or combinations, if you'd find that helpful. I'll just respond and say it's really not necessary. I just needed to have my memory refreshed, and and I appreciate that. And and the Burlington example is an excellent example to refresh my memory. Thank you. So we also we do have a couple of other items that I believe are part of the BAA related to um, uh, flexible pathways and adult basic ed and special services. I did see in here somewhere. Uh, are you prepared to talk about those? Sure, well, they're not uh, BAA related, but uh, no. right below uh, in the uh, reversion yeah. section of the presentation, you can see that uh, section B504.1 flexible pathways. Again, when Kathy and the accounting team closed the books, they took a look at uh, whether or not there were any outstanding purchase order obligations what was needed for uh, subgrant obligations. And then that was the request, the carryover request of 1.1 million. And then the, the difference was 1.5 uh, that's getting reverted back to the fund. So I'm just looking at this list and it looks like six, a reversion of 63,000 to adult basic ed, 71, 70, uh, 52,000 to educational services and 10, 11,000 for flexible pathways. Is that, it's one of the things I was asked, asked about. Is that something that? That's not ringing a bell to me, but if that's something that uh, we can take a uh, action item, we can look into that. This, this is the, uh, the reversion, the Ed Fund reversion that came right from the carryover memo that we submitted to finance and management. Okay. This has been a little bit of a complicated document to go through. I'm, I apologize for my own confusion here. And I'm happy to take a, uh, an action item uh, and research that and get right back to you. Right. Um, I, one of the reasons I asked about the adult basic education is I'm seeing a reversion here, um, but I, and I'm, I'm not sure which fund that comes from. I think it, I'm not sure which fund it came from, but I'm also hearing that the um, independent uh, adult basic ed groups are, are really struggling financially. So I wasn't sure where that fit in. If either of you know, if you, either of you know where we stand with that. It's not ringing any bells for me at the moment, but Brad, uh, any- uh... I, 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 I believe adult basic ed is, adult education and literacy is part of the general fund. I think that was taken out of the ed fund a year or two probably two years ago, maybe three. That's my memory. That's my memory as well. I think it's in the general fund. And, and I, yeah. I'm not sure if it's on what you what you have up here, Bill, the, the uh, general fund part of what we did for reversions and carry forwards. But when I, I looked up, when I look on that, uh, I see section B504, which is education, adult education and literacy. We're carrying forward almost $162,000, reverting six, roughly $63,500, which I believe is the number you, you put out there, Chair Webb. Okay, yeah. And do you know anything? Do you have any thoughts on, on the, the centers that are struggling financially, where this fits in with that or? I, I, I do not. No, okay. Um, and the education services, what is, what is that? It's, uh, I'm looking at it, it's, 
It's uh, I see it here. Um, again, again, that's that's general fund. I, again, I'm on I'm on the initial memo. Just so you know, Bill, where what I'm looking at the one initial one we sent to uh, Commissioner Gresham. Yeah, the um, twenty thousand two nineteen. Yeah. Um, and that's that. Uh, there's section B five hundred one of that, which is education services, and and that has a carry forward of almost two hundred, about just over two hundred seventy five thousand, and a reversion of just over twenty thousand. Okay. But again, I, I don't I don't know any more about. Well, here wait. There's another there's another section to this page. Um, It's got, it's got almost 45,000 for salaries and benefits for staff. Uh, for your staff. I, I don't know, this is not my area of expertise. So I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think something we'll have to get back to you on um, okay. because I, I did not put this document that I'm looking at together. And I, okay. I know very little about this side of the world. Yeah. As a, am I to also understand there's a whole other VAA document coming? Did I hear that? an updated document. So Chair Webb, it, it's Bill. I, I apologize to the, you and the committee. I had only submitted for testimony the Ed Fund portion of the, mm -hmm. uh, the reversion, okay. thinking that that's what we were talking about today as it related to CTE. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, rest assured that uh, we will submit as part of our budget book, all of the reversion. So you will be able to see what, uh, you're look, apparently looking at, which is the memo that we sent to uh, finance and management on 8-4, which mm -hmm. would include general fund reversions, carry forwards, as well as ed fund, as well as special funds. Okay. And we can dig into the, uh, the details at that time. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Representative James, did I miss you? Or is that a new hand or an old hand as we would call it? Old hand. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, what time are we? At Fifty-six. Do we have our folks from? Is Scott Farr in the room yet? So. Here, well, uh, I did speak to uh, Ruth and also Jay, and I believe that uh, they will be joining us at the top of the hour, also. Okay. Well, why don't we can just take a we we'll just take a five minute break and we'll come back. So we can just go on a on a rest. <laughs> 